So yeah, that's 136,000. I keep coming. 500 on the Scoville. <sighs> hey, what's going on everybody? From GL Pro UK, I'm Mason Carter and you're watching Finger LinkedIn Good. It's a show with spicy questions and even spicier wings. Today we're joined by Jay Lugrove. He's the co-founder and managing director of GL Pro UK, a content creation agency based in London. Renowned author of the 2019 bestseller, Go F Yourself, How to Deal with Any Situation Life Throws at You. He is also the titular host of the Jaylee Show podcast, streaming live on LinkedIn, Thursdays at 2 p.m. GMT. Jay Lugrove, welcome to the show. <laughs> I'm so That's, nervous. Uh, you're nervous. <laughs> That's good. Well, it's not good. So, hot sauce. How are you with hot sauce? I'm not good. Um, so, uh, when I met my wife, uh, like, nine years ago, a, a korma curry was like, I was sitting, sweating out and using handfuls and napkins and stuff. Over the last uh, decade, I've got slightly better. I do, tr I like, I kind of say this, I do go for the hot one uh, on the menu, but I don't necessarily, I don't deal with it well. It, 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 it hits me like a ton of bricks. I'm, from here on, I am worried. Good job we're doing this today. <laughs> Good job we're doing this. Okay, delicious. Okay. Spiky. First Good. sauce out the bag. Great. So, your first question. Mm. If there's one thing I've learned about you, Jay, it's that you're a fountain of knowledge from all the different job experiences you've had over the years. From sales in the IT sector, transitioning into the video production. Along your journey, what has been the best advice you have ever received? It's a very good question. Um, I guess the advice changes depending on the role. Um, I've kind of worked from the, that is slightly hot, you know. <clears throat> My first one. <laughs> oh no. Um, oh no. Oh no. So, <laughs> oh no. Um, so I guess, uh, depending on the role, the advice has changed. I used to have some brilliant sales managers in the past who would just come and give like little golden nuggets like these things, but they were better. Um, and just be able to help me out. I think one is don't sell the sizzle, sell the sausage. And I recently got that wrong when I was telling the person who told me about that. Um, but basically, you know, it's very easy for when, as a salesperson, to talk about all the things it could do and how cool it is and how you should buy it, but not actually talk about the important stuff, which is why someone might need something and like what their problem is, because that's the sausage, right? You, we, we eat the sausage, right? We eat the sizzle. Right, what have we got next? We've got the, uh, the Good Hurt Fuego. <laughs> Whiskey Habanero. Whiskey Habanero. Okay. All right, cheers. Cheers. Salute. Salute. Mm. Delicious. You're in a band called the Brass Cats, mm. the stage name Dr. JJ Love Group. Yes, I was. <laughs> now, I think I speak for everyone here when I say, I remember where I was when I first heard the Brass Cats album for the first time. Now that sounds like the Brass Cats' greatest hits. Later remastered as the return of the Brass Cats, the debut album, what would you say you miss most about your gigging days? Drinking, no. Um, <laughs> I loved, I, it's hot. I, I loved, I still love playing in the band. And I guess the guys, it was brilliant to have four friends who are much more talented than me. Um, I've always been a like practice until you can play everything. I've not really had much like natural God given talent. So um, what we Brass Cats were great as is me and Tony were basically drunken karaoke singers at the front with just the most incredible back line behind us. Um, and watching random little ideas that I've thought up or me and Tony have kicked around on an acoustic guitar and laughed silly at, and then taking it to the band and watching it become this song, is some of the most like, just impressive moments of my life, just watching these guys who know music. Two of them are brothers. Big shout out to uh, Charlie Colson Smith and uh, Tom Colson Smith. God bless him. So as brothers, they had that even extra level 
of being musicians. Like it's not only a case of where you nod and you're like everyone knows it's like now you drop and you go for it. They could talk with like just in kind of oh should we take it up it's like third key yeah third key and that and they would just know where they're going and where the other one wants to go and write these incredible pieces. So I, I love that and I love recording. I'm not very good at it. But I love recording, it's just an amazing experience. Every time we've uh, recorded, we've gone away and lived in it and stayed in it for like a week or so and nothing better than sitting for two days listening to people do drums. It's long, but it's great fun just being part of the process. And playing live was excellent. Uh, we had the Brass Army. Who are you? Brass Army! <laughs> and um, yeah, just a great bunch of people who are all still friends today. Third wing. <laughs> Third wing. Okay, and green. And green. I like that. That that feels that feels uh, like a wheatgrass shot, and it's going to be fine. Yeah. Salut. Salut. Okay, you can really taste the jalapeno. You really can. Nice and green. You know, after that is that is no heat in comparison to the last one. Although oh. I've said that both times as soon as I've taken a bite. I mean, just the heat come just out. along for the ride now. Easy peasy. See how it goes. Loved it. Cool. Okay, this is the part of the show called Clarify That Snap, where we take a deep dive into our guests' social media photos, and it's up to them to give us more context. So Jay, take a look at this. So it, during lockdown, everyone had a project. Um, mine was to realize a quite a long project, which I've been wanting to do for an awful long time, which was to restore a um, old stove, which I bought like a multi-fuel stove which I got from some guy ages ago and then left outside. So it had been outside for four years and was covered in rust and I was starting to get to the idea where maybe I wasn't going to do this great big smoker idea. And I love smoked food and I spent a fortune traveling to places that do great smoked food. So I finally, during lockdown, while we all spent that time at home, was able to get out and kind of restore this whole cast iron stove. And then I, I found a company uh, on Instagram called Happy Grill Mall. Right. So Happy Grill will built this other half of the uh, of the barbecue, the actual grill and such for uh, for this smoker for me, and it was great because they just kept saying to me, "It was like we we make these all the time, Jay. Like we can make you a box, and it'll be amazing, and it'll arrive next week." And instead, I went down the eight week course of slowly but surely bringing this old stove back to uh, back to its life and its prominence. It certainly makes some delicious food, but it's like a, it's like learning to jet ski. Uh, like if I bought just soup, bought a jet ski, I'd have to suddenly learn by going, ah! and the same thing is happening with meat. I buy meat, I cook it until it's leather and it gets it right down. Don't cook it like that again. <laughs> so it's a slow process, but it gives me a good excuse to get outside and uh, make sure I'm barbecuing every weekend. And during lockdown as well, it must have been a great. It was, I was feeding the 5,000 with uh, tons of smoked meat and smoked porks and never managed to do a brisket yet, which everyone else seems to find really mm. easy, but uh, 2022 is the year for that. Flying through these now. <sighs> this one's called Extreme Habanero. Cheers. Cheers. You're doing very well, by the way. I know. How I'm doing it, I have no idea. Easy. You haven't drunk any water yet, have you? Um, I can. <laughs> It'll make you feel better. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm securing my own. Oh, that's a noser. Mm. That's nosy. Let's ring around the posy. Get right up your nosy. I don't know that song from the Brass Cats. <laughs> it's not the new album. Okay. Back in 2016, your show, How to Write a Tune, was nominated for Best Podcast in the World at the National Podcast Awards. Was well, indeed, represent. A show where you talk to artists about their songwriting processes and successes. How do you think you have evolved as a podcast host from that first show? Well, that's a great question. Um, we jumped into How to Write a Tune very, relatively quickly. Tony had a podcast which had 10 or 12 episodes um, released before that. Um, but How to Write a Tune was really the first show where I was a host or the host. And um, Tony was producer, absolutely co-host as well, but kind of up to me to hold the reins. So early on, I spent an awful lot of time learning how to interview. I watched hours of Parkinson, right? Just hours, because I was like, who's the great? Okay, well, I know who the greatest is. But also at the same time, I was falling in love with podcasting. So for the 70 or 80 episodes that we released, those shows you can hear me kind of go through different tracks of like how to interview and learning new things and when to shut up. And also I was doing a lot of self-assessment. So I was listening to the podcasts don't, much like everyone, I don't like the sound of my own voice, but I was listening to them to find when I was getting in the way of the interview. And sometimes that's like not saying anything. Mm. 
Sometimes that's just leaving big periods of, of quiet for too long and suddenly people realize, oh, hang on, I'm talking. They hear the sound of their own voice. You need to then give listening noises or prompts. And I found that like mime actually was the best way to sit there as you're quite rightly doing now, um, but sit there and be like, mm, mm, mm. but if you made noises, they people brain heard you make a noise, put it together with the fact that the only noise has been their voice for a couple of minutes and then get to the awful part of a podcast when people go, yeah, but like, you know, and then stop because they're freaked out. The one thing I loved about that show was is every, every guest we had on, I listened to all the albums I could. I wrote notes and I just fell down different rabbit holes of like funk or punk or battle rap or we did tons of singer songwriter stuff which you could look at and say is all the same or you could listen to them all and see how very widely different everybody is in that industry. So, And it was back when there was CD players and uh, I used to have one of the old on, on your visor with just stuffed full of CDs, which was everyone who'd been on, on how to write a tune, which meant I could show up to it and, and be a fan. And that, I think that was my, my kind of point was to be a real fanboy in there and, and give people the opportunity to be like, tell us how you write. Um, the interesting thing was, is there's like five ways people write. <laughs> and I found that out from doing like the knowledge of crowds. <laughs> you have to listen to how to write a tune and find out what those are. I'm halfway through. This next one looks horrendous. This one is Heartbreaking Dawn's 1841. Ghost Pepper. And there, there is, a, there is a, a picture of someone who's dying on the front. Yeah, we thought that would be comforting. It is. It's now I'm feeling good about it. Let's do it. Okay. okay. Oh, cheers. Yeah, you've got work. I'm working on it. Finger LinkedIn. Mmm. 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 Okay. 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 I think I just don't like the picture, but yeah. <clears throat> what we got? Okay. <coughs> so, <coughs> in between doing actual work and drinking all the caffeine, we like to talk about films and TV shows here in the office. We do. Um, what would you say is one of the most underrated TV shows that you would constantly recommend to people to seek out? Easy. Watch it. So Aaron Sorkin's follow-up to The West Wing was uh, Studio 60 on the Sunset Strip. This was made just after Friends finished and had Bradley Whitaker, who um, was in The West Wing and is brilliant, and also Matthew Perry as the two leads. And essentially, uh, like Saturday Night Live. So it's a Saturday Night Live takeoff and these two guys, one's a producer and one's a writer. It's a brilliant, brilliant show, but it is only like 12 or 13 hour long episodes long. And reason being for that is it was ceremoniously canceled. The brilliant thing is about it is that Aaron Sorkin is a great writer. I knew for a fact that this was going to be canceled during. So he smashed in what his ideas for season two and season three, whammy! And the last five episodes are just incredible. Um, John Goodman was in it for two episode arc and won an Emmy. Like there's tons and tons of brilliant, brilliant, brilliant um, performances. And there's a lot of people now who have actually become famous. And it's just brilliant. It's a wonderful little piece of like meta behind the scenes TV with TV being made. Um, and yeah, an absolutely brilliant show. Wow. Sounds like great recommendation. <laughs> Thank you. Final three. Yes. Like so that. this is the saucy bitch, triple X. So how many triple. X's? It's called triple and then there's three X's. So I guess nine, nine X's. X's. And, and, and it's very, very angry. It's very angry. It's very angry. Yes. Again, this is another one that we don't have a, an official Scoville. Great. Level four. Cool, but, I'll, um, let, I'll let you know. I'm, I'm feeling at this point I can test it. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'll let you know too. Mm. Nice. He's saucy. Mm. Mmm. Well, that comes at you like Mike Tyson. You're now entering your third season of your LinkedIn live show, The Jaylee Show, where you talk to industry experts from everything from social media marketing to graphic design and MMA fighting. Who would be your dream guest on the show and why? Joey Diaz. No Joey. thinking, no messing, no stress. Gotta be the one and only. Joey Diaz is, as far as I can tell, the greatest comedian who ever lived. However, I haven't seen him do that on a special before. We saw him live in LA when uh, me and Tony flew over there for a conference. I've listened to countless podcasts and he's so funny. When he, we can watch a bunch of comedians dying with laughter, you know that this is something higher level. Like it must be when all the local artists went round and saw Picasso's work and went, oh, wow. Like you can just see that 
what he's doing isn't the norm. When we saw him live, literally both nights, he was doing kind of the same topics, but going off on different, it wasn't the same set. Um, and both nights, someone fell off their chair laughing. It's very impressive to knock someone off the chair laughing. Um, and he managed to do it literally both nights in a row. So I'd love to have him on because not only is he a comedian, but I used to listen to his shows before going into sales in the morning. Well before I drove, I used to uh, take train. I stood on a train station listening to this guy talking about how you got to get up and wash your monkey and this is the day the devil died at sea. Go and grab a day with both hands. And he is not in any way a motivational speaker. He's just someone who's been a criminal their whole life, has now sorted themselves out and is talking about how to like, work hard, get you some results, and also have some fun doing it. So I would love to have Joey on, but I've no idea if I would be able to interview him because I'd probably be just laughing too hard and falling all around the place. <clears throat> Correct. <laughs> it's getting serious now. Oh, yeah. It was before, but the bomb, the beyond bomb. insanity. I never thought I'd actually taste this. I'm gonna go for a little dab. A little dab on top? I am. Okay. It's just a. Okay. I'm not only gonna do it so many times, right? Do you want a dab? You can save that to the last one. Oh no. No, no, yeah, this is your, your show and you, uh, oh. you're going rogue. So. Okay. Ready? How many scovilles? Doesn't matter, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. Cheers. Oh no. Oh no. Why? Why? I want to run away. No, oh, God. So yeah, that's 136,000. I keep coming. 500 on the Scoville. Ah. Mm. Oh, that's bad. Is it in there? Ah. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Watch it around the eyes. Yeah. Oh, the dab was a mistake. Hard mistake. Go, heavy. How's the question? In your downtime, you love to fish. Fly fishing, to be precise. Coming from someone who's closest to actual fishing is just crabbing. What is it about fishing that gives you a sense of zen? And and, and what advice would you say to someone who wants to try it for the first time? It's good fun. Um, so fly fishing isn't easy to start with. Mm. Ah. So fly fishing, it's hard to do because you have to learn to cast. Mm. And what you're doing is you're hunting, is you're pretending you're food. So it comes up and says, hey, you all look like food. Well, you're not food. I oh, know you're a hook. <sighs> yeah. Whereas the other fishing, you get food and you put it in the water. Water. Oh, very briefly. So that that's sort of scent and stuff in the, in the water. And the fish can come and find that scent. You are my Everest. And, uh, Fly fishing, you can have a great day and not catch anything. I have anything getting near you. And, uh. Oh. Mm. Mm. Okay. And fly fishing is all about getting that fly to land right and act like a fly and try and catch a fish. So, right. You can have an amazing time without actually catching a fish. There you go, fishing. Fishing good. Fishing good. <coughs> We're on to our final wing. It is spicy. This tastes spicy. You spice my body. I can spice you. You literally just got out of the box. And yeah, you're a trickster. Rapper. I know you, man. You're a trickster. Cheers. Okay. Oh, see you later. Yeah. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, no. Ah! Oh, no. Oh no. It's hot, isn't it? Oh no. No. That one's definitely the worst. You're doing it very well. Oh dear. Mind over matter, my friend. Oh, matter over matter. 
Lying into my money and my... Okay. Uh, uh. Starting out in a shed in the bottom of the garden, and now with offices in the London area, your clientele has expanded internationally, providing high quality content to high-end businesses during a global pandemic nonetheless. What are you most proud of when it comes to GeoPro? Mm, not this video. Mm -hmm. I'm proud I didn't think I'd do it. We started this. Oh, man. I just got some zip. Zip? Mmm. I might have another bite of it. Okay. Yours looks less red, but yeah. So, uh, go to sniff. Ah, uh, Jimmy. Ah, uh, man. So it sucks when people leave. I don't like it. But it was amazing to have people start. I'm gonna help them get to somewhere where, mmm, mmm. If they do leave, they're already gonna do something that they might not have been able to do beforehand. And they have to talk quick before the heat comes back. So, much like myself, I wasn't confident when I could do this. We've had people start with this who might not have been confident either. Or, so maybe they were confident in their abilities, but they hadn't actually done it yet. And everyone has a fear of imposter syndrome. So being able to help people through that, see them grow. Mm. Mm. Fuck. And then follow their careers after they've left jail, move on to great big brighter things. It just makes me really, really proud every time because I know I might have had just a little, little tiny hand on that. And what a wonderful thing. Mm. Mm. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Jay Ludgrove, taking on the wings of death. Now there is nothing left to do but roll out the red carpet for you. So, this camera, this camera, and this camera. Tell the good people what you got going on in your life. You can catch me on all the social media platforms. At Jay Ludgrove. We've got the Jay Lee Show live on LinkedIn every two weeks. Also check out Geocast. Wherever you get your podcast apps. That's it. Uh, I look forward to seeing you in the future. Give him a round of applause, guys. Round of applause. Thank you. It's bad. Amazing. Bad. That's so bad. As bad as you thought. Yeah. Also, if it wasn't obvious, I didn't actually have any bosses on mine. Son of a bitch. F you. Happy April Fools. F you, Mason.